Here's a live view look at the planet Jupiter through my telescope as it is right now in the night sky. I can see it, naked eye of course. Look at that magnification, look at the details on the surface of the planet. The fifth planet from the sun, the gas giant, the largest planet in our solar system. video, I'm going to take a picture of the planet Jupiter through my telescope. Right now, tonight actually, is the best time to take a picture of Jupiter because it's at opposition. That means that it's at its biggest and closest for the year as the Earth sits directly between the Sun and the gas giant known as Jupiter. Wait, this is an astrophotography YouTube channel, right? So how come I haven't ever taken a picture of the planet Jupiter before? My first interest in astrophotography was photographing bright objects, the stuff I could see with my naked eye. The moon and the planets were right there. I knew exactly where they were and I wanted to see them up close and photograph them. In fact, one of the first things I did when I got my first telescope was look at the planet Jupiter through the eyepiece. And it was life-changing for me, quite literally. I had no idea what I was doing, but through that small telescope I could see the cloud bands of Jupiter, the great red spot, the four Galilean moons orbiting the planet. There it was, it was actually out there, it's real, in real time. But after I observed the gas giant through my telescope and both eyepieces that came with the telescope, something happened. I wanted more. I wanted to see Jupiter bigger and closer and in better detail. I felt like I had to show everyone so they could experience what I just witnessed. I didn't expect to get that urge. I thought I would see Jupiter up close, cross it off my list, another awesome life experience in the books. But as many of you have experienced, this led me down the astrophotography rabbit hole or black hole. And I went deep into astronomy. I mean really deep. Suddenly a clear night took precedence over everything else in my life. Astrophotography forums and space documentaries and joining my local astronomy club. I became obsessed with space and it was all because of Jupiter. But that's when things went in a completely different direction. I thought to myself, if it's so easy to capture a planet through the eyepiece of my manual telescope with a little point and shoot camera, What's stopping me from photographing a galaxy or a nebula? I began looking into what's needed to photograph a galaxy and suddenly deep sky astrophotography became my new obsession in photographing our solar system neighbors took a back seat. How could I let photographing planets fall so far down my interest list? Well, that ends tonight. I've got way better tools at my disposal now and I have so much more experience than I did back then. I'm so f***ing excited. Here's the plan. I'll use the Celestron Edge HD11 SCT, my biggest, baddest telescope I have with the most magnification, widest aperture. This telescope gives me nearly 3,000 millimeters of focal length to play with so I can pull Jupiter in nice and close. The telescope will slew and track Jupiter via the equatorial telescope mount it's sitting on, the Skywatcher EQ8R Pro. Instead of a regular telescope eyepiece at the back of the telescope, I'm going to be using a dedicated planetary astrophotography camera, and that is the ZWO ASI 462MC. This will allow me to capture full color images in one shot of this planet at a high frame rate. I'll take short video clips of the planet Jupiter using the camera through the telescope and hope that I get enough good frames where there's less turbulence in the air. Essentially, you take a video with lots of frames of the planet and just extract the best ones where the planet looks the sharpest. The software that I use to run the camera is called Fire Capture and it's got some great tools for framing and focusing up the planet and of course recording those videos. It is a hot, humid night here in the backyard. As you can see, that moon is just trying to poke out from beneath the clouds. Jupiter will be up soon after that. Hopefully I can get a clear patch of sky where I can take a short video on the planet. I can hear someone laying down a thick baseline in the distance and it sounds like Working for the Weekend by Loverboy. They're a local Canadian band, well they're Canadian anyway, so it might actually be Loverboy playing somewhere. They're no glass tiger, but I'd see him. The best part about using an eyepiece to align the telescope mount first before you put the camera in there is that you actually get a live real view of the planet yourself when lining things up. Right now I've got Saturn in the eyepiece. I'm gonna call my wife out to come see it. Can you come see Saturn for a second? Rudy, you stay. 
Stay. I smell a skunk. You're not coming out. To the left of the moon there. See it? That's where you're pointed. Yeah. Now look through the eyepiece. Never gets old, eh? No. I see some moons. I see two. One to the bottom left and one to the upper right. Okay, my turn. Oh, yeah. Here's a live view look at the planet Jupiter through my telescope as it is right now in the night sky. I can see it, naked eye of course, through the telescope at almost 3,000 millimeters focal length. Look at that magnification. Look at the details on the surface of the planet. The fifth planet from the sun, the gas giant, the largest planet in our solar system. Just incredible to witness it at opposition. What a night. I spent the next three hours taking pictures of Jupiter, thousands of them. As each new frame came in, I couldn't help but think of how far I've come and how this hobby has shaped my life. From the very first view of Jupiter through a telescope, I knew I had to show someone. An inexplicable urge to share astronomy with others, even if they're not that interested. These days I get to have all of you guys watch my videos and it feels amazing actually. Maybe this was the urge that I felt that night, to have this moment. Thank you.